Hello everyone and welcome back to Red 5 Plays Global Space Program. I had a question for you all. Do you have people stuck in a wreckage that you can't get out? Do you want to travel the moon, or Minmus for that matter, and not have to worry about your base tipping so easily? Are you worried about not having enough Delta V to get to the moon or Minmus? Then look no further, because I give you the Mooner Minibus! Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. The Moon and Minibus is capable of taking up to five crew members at a time, including tourists. Speaking of which, we can pull them out of wreckages using the claws and put them back on rescue vessels for the return home. Your days of abandoning people on the Moon, and Windmus for that matter, are no more. Now let's blast off. Yes, I have met Jeb. So what? It's mainly an autopilot module. Not to mention MechJeb has helped me save fuel in the past on many occasions. Truth be told, I think everyone should have MechJeb. Now that we reached our desired apoapsis altitude of 90 kilometers, we can cut the engines, deploy the large solar panels, and then wait until we reach the apoapsis so that we can execute another delta V and raise our periapsis to 90,000 meters, and therefore we would have achieved a stable equatorial prograde orbit. Now I'm setting the moon as my target so that I can execute a Harman transfer to that target. Once I'm in position in low Kerbal orbit, I'll execute the Harman transfer burn, and then I'll be on my way to the Moon. Once I'm in its sphere of influence, I will change my periapsis on the Moon to, let's say, 15 to 20 kilometers, circularize my orbit at that new periapsis, so that I can achieve a stable, very low Moon orbit, then I will land at a specified landing site. And spoiler alert, I would put plenty of Delta V to spare. Let's go. At my current trajectory, I'll end up crashing into the moon, so I need to change my periapsis to, let's say, 20 kilometers at a fixed time. That way, Mech will know, hey, you have to execute this burn in 15 seconds. After I hit the execute button, Mech will automatically create the maneuver node, turn the ship to that specific node direction, and then fire up the engines when the time is right. Bingo. Now I need to circularize my orbit because if I don't, I'll end up drifting around Kerbin and it'll be a while before I can get to the moon again. So let's hit circularize at the next. Oops, sorry, it's a hyperbolic orbit and they don't have apoapses. So let's set it to execute the burn of the next periapsis. I jab will get the ship pointed in the right direction and then auto warp to that periapsis and then execute the Delta V, which I will still have plenty of. Now 
now that I'm in Lunar Orbit, I need to figure out where I'm going to land it. Oh wow, I have enough Delta V to land in my current stage, which is unacceptable because I need the final stage or else my rover will just tip over and destroy itself. Okay, let's find a spot. Oh wow, let's see that pod. Let's land you that. Investigate. Set auto warp. And get rid of that stage. I don't need that anymore. In fact, the sooner I get rid of that, the better. I don't need to worry about solar panels deploying at this moment because I have radioisotope generators on the rover in case you know, the solar panels break off or something like that. So power's not going to be much of an issue right now. Okay, let's have Meg Jab try to get that ship at the specific landing spot. Auto put on. My current stage will be crashed into the moon instead of landing there because, well, it doesn't have the landing legs extended. If I set the landing legs at that current stage, it will be too high and very unstable and therefore I'm more likely to crash the rover rather than land it. Okay so far, let's see how much LTV I have for that current stage. Surprise, surprise, I got plenty. Wow, well, not that far off. But no matter, that's what a rover's for, traveling on the moon's surface. Ejecting that stage and now for the landing phase. Poor stage. Such a waste of perfectly good fuel. No matter. That's the drilling converters for making our own fuel so that we can gas up the rover. There's and ships that happen to come by. That's why it's called the Moon and Minibus. So there's a lot of purposes besides rescuing surrendered tourists. And now executing a burn to slow down its velocity. As you can see, I set the landing speed to 0.5 meters per second so that it'll execute a smooth landing and not destroy anything. Our lights, I'm getting close. And... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Almost there. Come on. Almost there. Covered the nav ball to see how close to the ground we are. Plus, there's always surface info. Not to mention, MechJeb has distance from su surface on there to show you how far you are from landing and how worried you might need to be if you're crashing down in flames or something. Wow! That was one neat landing right there. But unacceptable because I need to get the wheels on the ground, not the landing legs. Okay, disconnect the stage, try to wobble it around. Hopefully it doesn't crash into anything. Come on, come on, come on! Bounce, bounce, bounce. Wow. That could not have been a more perfect landing. Best part is, I didn't need to use any of the cheats. Even so, I wouldn't have to check the wheels. I remember watching some videos in which an engineer got out and checked the wheels the rover to make sure they were working fine because, well, what good is the rover that has a flat tire or a broken wheel or something like that? Stage, deploy some panels. It's always good to deploy panels when it's braked. Deploy the ladders. Well, in this gravity, not that we need them. We can simply just jump and jet back out. Let's transfer some crew so that the engineer can get out. Blast off. Okay, hit the lights. Man, that's awesome. No problems on the wheels. I don't think I even need to check the left side either because, well, that landing was pretty sweet. Like I said before, that could not have been more perfect landing. And no cheats. Yes, I know. Matt Lown created larger vehicles like that that can actually do science, but I'm pretty sure those are more likely to tip over doing the landing spot and they'll be useless. 
or worse, break apart. I remember one time I landed one of Matt Lowndes' rovers with the cheats on, lost some solar panels and a couple of radiators. Okay, let's plant a flag. I mean, what's good is a moon landing without a flag? Yes, I said it. Matt Lowndes got manly. Eat your hearts out. You may have invented rovers that can put, put kobolds in the moon. Well, did any rovers ever have the ability to rescue kobolds from wreckages and mine its own ore and convert it to fuel and oxygen and monopropellant? And it's also got some science on it, too. It may not have as much as some of the larger rovers you see out there, but it's still science. And it's got lights left, right, and on its sides, and radioisotope generators, and a probe core in case you needed to go unmanned. The reason I put a lot of stringers in the back is so the robot remains stable and not tip over during transit. Well, so long, landing legs. Now to check out that room. That pod we found on the way here. Megjet not only works for spacecraft and aircraft, but rovers as well. Now to set a destination for the rover. That pod we just found. Set a speed to, let's say, 7 meters per second. I don't want to go any faster or else I might tip over. And so, let's drive. Well, it took a while, but we finally made it to the emergency lander. Now, let's see what's going on with it. Approaching target now, and... What the? Oh crud, it sipped over. Now how are astronauts going to get home? Ooh, I know! I'll send a moon lander that works! And not only that, it'll send three at once, and, if need be, it can also get to Minmus and back. And now that we have the Moon and Minibus on board, we can refuel it.